Hey, hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. You better back off, or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. What was that? I, I couldn't hear over the sound of all that pathetic. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Whoa, 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 time out. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. <laughs> I like you. Walk into a new place. Good neighbors have the people for the people. You feel me? New face walks into my store, and you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? I've got a few minutes to browse. All the supplies, money, or violence can buy. Mayor Hancock? <laughs> I like you. Walk into a new place, make a show of dominance. Nice. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Sounds like anarchy. The best kind of anarchy. Embrace it, and maybe one day you'll call this little slice of chaos home. So long as you remember who's in charge. A new player and good neighbor. Hello, little pawn. Welcome to our fun and games. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, well, I'm not buying that. Hello. Come in peace, Lord. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. I'll take a look, sure. Murder and mayhem at a discount.
Got it. Forget what matters. Hey, Daisy, glad you can make it. How's my favorite girl doing? Didn't I see you on a date with Borowski the other day? Huh. He wishes. <laughs> all right, all right. We're Brotherhood of Steel track. better stay out of good name. Oh, that's right. All I'm what saying. matters? We freaks gotta stick together. And the best way to stick together is to keep an eye out for what drives us apart. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. You run in from something? Welcome home. Hey there. You step through the gate, you got balls.
Well, well, Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten me about the bunny. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs. It's perfect. Here for Amari. She's downstairs. Hey, Irma. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt himself. All right? Sure doesn't look like it came in with us. You got the memory pod loaded up? Oh, you're not Irma. Um. <laughs> Good neighbors crazy. Thefts, murders, worse. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. The whole world's crazy. N no argument here. You ever listen to the Silver Shroud? Huh. That's what we need. No matter how bleak things got, he saved the day. What can you tell me about the Shroud? He's from the radio shows. I've listened to all 419 episodes. And the holiday special. He's the best. Better than... Grognak and man-to-man -man combined. My family and I used to listen to every new episode. You mean when they first aired? How? The last broadcast was hundreds of years ago. I was in cryogenic storage for a long time. I only just woke up. Oh man, that's amazing! You're just like Mr. Abominable from episode 83. Yeah, something like that. Boy, if you just woke up. The world these days must take some getting used to. That's an understatement. Things may look bad, but we gotta try to make it better. I got a question for you. What if the Silver Shroud was real? With his black trench coat and gleaming silver submachine gun? I got a plan to bring him to life. So we can fight bad guys and give the rest of us a symbol of something better. What plan? I've built my own custom machine gun. Even better than the one in the show. But to make this work, I still need the most important piece. The genuine Silver Shroud costume herself. And they actually got one here in Boston. They made it for the TV show. Will you help? I might do it, if you make it worth my while. When you're done, I got a reward all squared away. Will you just help me out? I'll get the costume for you. You're gonna do this? For real? Before the bombs fell, they were filming the Silver Shroud pilot over at Hubris Comics. So that's where you'll find it. You're the best.
Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Skip to the good part, Doc. We plugged the brain implant into Mr. Valentine. Assuming he's willing to take on the risks. Hell, why not? Plenty of room in my head anyway. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see you. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Hell yeah. Tell me you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Remember, 
you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. The thing about happiness is... you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but, uh, you don't really believe it. You focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back, by comparison with what comes after, that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Come on, Sarah, you've got to give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on. You're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the Sheev. A lot of standing around looking tough. No, 
They sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we uh, sit down? Suit yourself. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. There was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. There was always a job for someone like me. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kinda ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't... Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah. ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. All computers are still working. That's good. The eggheads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No, nope. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh... I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of, uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh, I'm still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6, down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it over? Are we okay? 
Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come here, Pete. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! <laughs> finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory, so good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. You're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Well, some heads are going to roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. It's all over. But the dreamy. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? And 
I'm okay, Doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long-term damage. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? We got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes. Their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? What do you think we should do? Um, let me think. What about that memory involving Virgil, the rogue Institute scientist? If he were alive, we have a common enemy. He might help us. I like it. The memory said the Institute tracked him to the glowing sea, but that seems crazy. A madman would think twice about going there. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there to make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation and the glowing sea like a shield or a cloak, a way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same, if you're going to follow him. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds, Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry, maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great, if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Nick. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. What did you say? What? What are you talking about? Nothing. Never mind. If you say so. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. We have to head into the Glowing Sea. Any advice? Hmm. I'm a scent, so radiation isn't much of an issue for me, but an old suit of power armor might just be the guardian angel you're looking for. That or you could buy up all the Radex and rad away you can find from any chem dealer who's got it in stock. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. The detective... believe it. He looked just like Sammy, too. Sure as hell didn't act like him. Institute thinks they can replace people with synths in this town? 
they got another yeah. thing coming. Ever been to kill or be what killed? Am I gonna tell Some fine looking weapons. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time, but a flying ship, yeah, how's a... If you're sticking around, you need to join a crew. I hear Bobby No-Nos is looking. Need a place I'll to stay? With the no Try Hotel Rexford.
that. Getting along. Hell yeah. 
be able to hack this.